Senator Arnold Schwarzenegger charged full bore into the national debate over big business shaping our politics and class warfare. And in our third story tonight, he spoke the plain truth behind their motives. Greed. Just greed. But it turns out most of America does not even know just how rich the rich have gotten. A new study based on polling from 2005 finds that Americans think the richest 20% of the country own about 59% of the wealth. At the time of the poll, the richest 20% owned 84% of the wealth. And that was before the recession. New census data out today showing that median household incomes fell again last year to $50,000, while those making at least $180,000 saw their incomes rise. The income gap between rich and poor never larger since the nation began to track it. The 20% that earned more than $100,000 a year took home 49% of all income last year. Those living in poverty made just 3.4% of all income, making the richest to poorest ratio 14 to 1, without even factoring how much tax loopholes, dividends, and capital gains further enrich the rich. And we have new information on how the rich are using that money. While individual voters have given more money to Democratic campaign committees, the Associated Press reports that the Citizens United ruling on leashing private groups to pour millions of dollars into political campaigns has benefited Republicans by a ratio of 6 to 1. The outpouring of money leading to last night's extraordinary outpouring from the Republican governor of California, talking about a political campaign now underway there to, in essence, take over the state with cash in order to undo the legislation he signed four years ago to reduce carbon emissions there by 30 percent by the year 2020. The ads claiming his new law will kill jobs. Does anyone really believe that these companies, out of the goodness of their black oil hearts, are spending millions and millions of dollars to protect jobs? In the rest of his speech, audio of which was provided to Countdown, Governor Schwarzenegger did not hesitate to name which companies, including the Koch brothers, founders of the Tea Party movement. Here's how he started. I want to talk about the corruption of the democratic process and about forces willing to sabotage this country's economic future for private gain. I want to talk about Texas oil interests that have descended upon California to overturn a California environmental law. And then, as soon as they've done their dirty work, thanks to millions of dollars of scare tactic advertising, they intend, in the words of their own spokesperson, to fold up their tents and go home. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a great drama. There is a great struggle playing out here in California right now that the rest of the world doesn't pay much attention to and knows very little about. And that's why I'm here today to put the spotlight on this very important issue. And uh, let me just say that the entire oil industry is not involved in this deception that I will explain here today. No, there are some oil companies that are trying to do the right thing, but others are not. Oil companies like Valero and Tesoro and Frontier and Koch Industries are blatantly trying to manipulate the will of the people and the public good. Manipulate people? How? The oil company sponsored a new ballot initiative to halt California's new law until unemployment drops to 5.5%. The governor comparing them to the 20th century conspiracy of gas, auto, and tire companies that killed off public transportation rail systems. The day Valero and Tesoro and others are involved are uh, also involved in the conspiracy, but not in a criminal conspiracy, but clearly in a cynical one. They are not seeking to buy rail systems, but to buy votes this time. Yet the motivation is the same, which is self-serving greed. Two-thirds of, of Californians approve our state landmark law to reduce carbon dioxide emissions. Do you know who the two most prominent opponents are? Valero and Tesoro, also two of the th state's top polluters. They are behind an initiative on a November ballot called Proposition 23 which would suspend our law to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. But in reality, because of the fine print when it comes to unemployment, they really don't want to just suspend it. They want to kill this initiative. They want to kill our laws. And while they're not creating a shell company, they are creating a shell argument that this is about saving jobs. Does anyone really believe that these companies, out of the goodness of their black oil hearts, are spending millions and millions of dollars to protect jobs.
This is like Eva Brown writing a kosher cookbook. <laughs> it's not about jobs at all, ladies and gentlemen. It is about the ability to pollute and thus protect their profits. Defer for a moment your reaction to the last analogy. The cost we will pay for big oil's profits if they get their way? The governor again. Those who seek to overturn our carbon reduction law say that the green tech future is too costly. Another excuse, great, great excuse, huh? But here's what they don't want to tell you. Their cost calculations doesn't include the increased cost of doing business their way, the old way. They don't include the costs, for instance, of rising oil prices as the developing world demands more and more oil. They don't include the costs of job losses that these rising oil prices will force. They don't include the costs of hundreds of billions of dollars in tax breaks that have gotten and continued to get. They don't include the costs of pollution that they're already causing. They don't the cost of, for instance, the 100,000 Americans who die every year from smog-related diseases. They don't include also the costs of 6.5 million hospital visits a year for smog-related illnesses. They don't include the cost of the next war over oil. And believe me, eventually it will come as we become more and more dependent on oil. I mean, I think that we have had enough wars in the Middle East because of oil. Don't you think so? <laughs> and that is why George Shultz, Ronald Reagan's Secretary of State, is firmly against Proposition 23 and is firmly against what Valero and Tesoro are doing. But when Arnold Schwarzenegger and George Schultz think big business have gone too far using our political system to enrich, enrich themselves even more, there is no class warfare in America. It would seem to be over, and they would seem to have won.